He's back! You thought we were done with the King of Wild claims? Well, think again. CC is here to tell us that the moon landing was faked because of space static. Why is that, you ask? And honestly, that's just the appetizer. Today, we're going to see CC, CCC, talking flat earth in the real world with another actual person. So if you thought this last video was nuts, you haven't seen anything yet. Shut up and sit down, you big bald f Please subscribe. Okay, I just met Rosen right here. Um, we're just hanging out here in... Um, we don't have to disclose the area. But we're in Westchester County right now. And we're going to talk a little bit about... Flutter. Flutters. Okay, since you brought the subject, I will start with something simple. Simple and flat earth work well together, and I personally can't wait to hear your simple thing, CeCe's new friend. Okay. The educational system... I know your wife's gonna call you in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> so is mine. We can limit... <laughs> it's the time, right, but anyway. We're limited, all right. The educational system, you know, you're born, you go to kindergarten, your boy, they give you tracks and tools, mm -hmm. you grow, they give you this and that, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And somehow they shape you according to what you're capable, then you go to school, and this is where it starts. Stop the tape, it starts in school. Well, duh, they get you with the primary colors first, then the letter G for globe. And before you know it, you're a fully functioning sheep who believes in the concept of area and volume. That's a huge sandal. No, it's not a huge sandal. <laughs> That would be a giant's flip-flop. But this is a huge scandal. Think about the logistics of this globally coordinated brainwashing, CC's new friend. Are the first grade teachers in Wales secretly reporting to NASA command about who drew the roundest picture? No, they are worried about the class hamster and who ate the glue. And if I was a gambling man, I'd put money on these two being the ones who were eating the glue as well as nibbling on the crayons. <laughs> the idea that a simple, repeatable observation that the Earth is a sphere requires a secret, decades-long, multinational, psychological warfare campaign against five-year-olds is... Well, I can't think of anything right now, but I will circle back to it. See what I did there? Circle. And you've never investigated Flat Earth at all? No. No. I mean, I read the, the books of Magellan, Fernando Magellan, how he sure. went around the world, okay. blah, blah, blah. And again, this is something that is like a... Hard information on the hard copy, which is a paper back in the time. You read a book. This yeah, is what you yeah, get. Yeah. Now people don't read books anymore. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. If, if you take, that's my opinion. If you take a child, and from day one in the school, you start to convince them that the earth Am is. Lying there with it? All right. All right. The earth is flat or uh, it's a cubic. This is awesome. We've got two people with a complete lack of self-awareness. He's criticizing the current system for being based on old paper data, but his personal research stops at a paperback about a guy who died 500 years ago. You're demanding empirical proof, yet your personal investigation is a trip to the history island saying, well, if I was told the earth was a cube, I'd believe that too. Yeah, that's precisely the problem. You believe whatever unsupported claim allows you to reject the simple proven fact in front of you. And you walk to one point and then you get through the gravity and it pulls you down to the other flat side and then you go... They will believe eventually one day anything. Hold on, flat sided ground, what the hell are you on about? You've gone from Magellan to the Looney Tunes physics department. Gravity is a force that pulls everything towards the center of mass. And if the Earth were flat or a cube, gravity would pull objects towards the center of that flat plane, meaning everything near the edges would be constantly pulled sideways into the center. You'd be living on a giant two dimensional dinner plate where you'd have to constantly climb up just to stay near the imaginary edge. Try and make actual physics work with that model. I dare you. Well, oh, let me ask you, we, we got to get into a couple things here. All right. Okay. All right. Um, to, you know, it's not only proving flat earth. I mean, it, I'm not saying I'm proving flat earth whatsoever. I, I am just um, showing people about flat earth that, um, you know, NASA lies. Tomorrow's the anniversary, you know, of their uh, launch uh, yeah. here in, in the U.S. 
uh, yeah, 1969. Apollo 11 or whatever. Yeah, Apollo 11, exactly. Very good. Good. And my question, the one question I do have for everybody is the Van Allen belts. Because back in 1959, a scientist said that we can't go beyond that Van Allen belt. Oh, here we go. If you can't prove the Earth is flat, you've got to at least try and prove that the moon landings were fake. All of them, I'm guessing. And CC, you chose the Van Allen belt, which is fine. It's a common claim from flat earthers and moon landing deniers. And you're claiming that in 1959, scientists said we can't go beyond the Van Allen belt. And you're absolutely correct that the Van Allen belts are a system of two highly energized radiation zones surrounding the Earth, and they were discovered in 1958. And they do pose a very real risk, which is why actual scientists have spent years solving the problem, not lying about it. The massive flaw in your claim, Chris, and every other moon landing deniers claim, including your new pal here, is the assumption that the Apollo simply flew straight to the most dangerous part of the belt and hung out for a picnic. They didn't. But apparently we, we have been traveling back and forth, uh, back from 1969 to 1972, six or seven times in such a short period of time. We never, we never went back. The astronauts are obviously all right. No radiation at all, no, no, you know, no disease at all that they've had. And that concerns me in a way because um, I don't think they ever went there. The idea that a manageable low radiation dose, which again they pass through quickly and with shielding, should immediately turn them into glowing green space zombies is just really stupid, Chris. And it demonstrates just how little you know about this stuff. NASA didn't just shrug and hope for the best. The Apollo astronauts were, and still are, some of the most intensively medically monitored people in human history. They they were tracked for immediate and long-term health issues, and their dose was logged. And let's address the ultimate gotcha. We never went back. That's not proof of a lie. That's a demonstration of shifting political and scientific priorities. The primary goal was achieved. Going to the moon cost billions, about 25.8 billion in 1970 dollars. Somebody let me know in the comments below what that is today. And the truth is, Chris, they had no need to go back immediately. The fact that they went six times in three years is already proof that they mastered the radiation problem you claim is impossible. So, so what's, yeah, when, when, when they, when they took that America. A lot of people don't believe that uh, anybody has been on the moon or anywhere, but... Uh, I mean, do you, do you feel like you're moving? Well, according to the science that I've been uh, exposed to, like physics, yeah, your mass cannot compare with the mass of the, in the gravity field of the Earth, so you can't feel like moving. That's, uh, that's what your brain that's is what taught. You, that's what the brain is taught. That you don't move. Now, I'm not saying that CC is stupid, but I don't think he even understood what he just heard from his new pal. Why? For a brief, terrifying second, you almost acknowledged the scientific concept, Chris. Your pal said your mass can't compare with the mass of the Earth, so you can't feel it like that, or, or something along those lines. And he kind of hit the nail on the head. You can't feel the constant, uniform speed of the Earth's rotation and revolution. It's called inertia, and it's the precise reason we're not thrown off the planet. So brilliant, you've successfully explained why the Earth is, in fact, rotating and revolving. But based on Chris's reaction, I don't think he realizes. So far, people have been exposed to a lot of science, a lot of facts. Quotation, facts. Now, that's, that's in quotation because uh, fact is something that I consider like a new, uh, no, something I can touch, smell, and feel. Oh my word, it's like they're having a stupid off. I can't smell oxygen, but I know it's there because I haven't snuffed it yet. The moment you refuse to accept anything you can't personally smell or feel, you've got to reject the entire modern world, including the video streaming platform we're all on now, Chris. Well, let's take a look if at the moon things. is always facing one side because yeah, of its I mean, you know, and That's what I want to bring up with you. Why nobody went on the other side to see what's going on there? I mean, if you realize in the entire, apparently the entire solar system, the moon, the moon, uh, 
Our satellite, yeah. Our satellite, very good, is the only one that's stationary that only points toward our planet. It's not stationary. The moon is in fact also rotating. It just happens to rotate at the exact same rate that it revolves around the Earth. Think of it like a, like a dancer moving around you but always facing you. They are rotating but you only ever see their face. Now this synchronization happens because of tidal forces. The moon is tidally locked to Earth. Over billions of years the Earth's gravity slowed the moon's rotation until the moon's rotational period matched its orbital period. It's a stable, predictable outcome of orbital mechanics. Out of every it's single... It's like an eye, obviously. Yeah, you know, like a always watching eye. Yes. Nothing slows down the rotation. Nothing. Or accelerates it's it. just up there like a picture. Yeah, and just go. So, yeah, and no, it is amazing, isn't it? I mean, it really is. It, you know, I mean, Saturn has, um, I don't know, how many planets? Like 19 or 20 planets? Yeah, satellites. So they, they all have to interfere with the and, and they're moving all around, yeah. they're revolving, and we're the only one in the... In, in, in the, in you know, the some, uh, astronomer will, will say, well, this is how we set up uh, the perfect distance, the tilt of the moon, and blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. The, the mass compared to the Earth mass uh, is doing, I don't know. Is anyone else getting dumb and dumber vibes or is it just me? The truth is many large moons in our solar system including Jupiter's four largest moons are also tidally locked to their host planets. It's the standard stable cosmic arrangement for massive satellites. It's not a perfect distance tilt and mass conspiracy. It's just the predictable outcome of gravity and momentum. Hang on a second, CC thinks space is fake. So where exactly is all this meant to be happening? or not happening. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber. So, for the entire month of November, or as I'm calling it, Movember. I'm cranking up the dial to 11, seven days a week of content, both uploads and live streams. And why? Because apparently the world hasn't had enough wild claims debunked and the ad revenue is higher in the last quarter of the year. <laughs> Well, so, for the entire month of November, I'm going to be going full tilt on every piece of nonsense out there. Flat Earth, Moon Landing Deniers, Young Earth Creationists. I don't mind, stupid is stupid. So, have you seen a particular brand of stupid you'd like me to address? If you have, now's your chance. Just drop an email to creaky at creakyblinder.com with a link to any video on any topic. The more nuts the better, and I'll take a look at it. And I also wanted to ask you a teeny weeny little favour if I may. Now I've started doing video essays on Fridays and they're staying because the people who are watching them are saying things like this. The people who are watching them are absolutely loving them. So that tells me two things. Thing one, I've already said. People are loving them in the comments. My mini documentaries. Thing two is that a huge number of you aren't even giving them a chance. I'm going to link the video essay playlist in the end card and I wanted to ask you to just try one and see what you think. They're a ton of work but I'm really, really having fun making them. And if you still don't like them after that then airy muff. I recommend either the Kent Hovind one or the Rapture one. I'm particularly proud of those two. Anyway, I guess I will see you uh, again tomorrow night then. I better go and have a rest. Love you. Bye. Out of everything that's on the internet, this is the best thing. Did you know that Bill Withers, the soul singer, had a brother called Bear? Yeah, he wrote the music you hear on the phone when you've been put on hold. It, 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 it. That's all, folks. I don't think so. No, 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 no. I don't think so, no, 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 it's never, ever, 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 ever gone.